Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, God put on my heart. I'm in my work clothes. Um, I'm getting ready for winter time around here, and it's time of the month to do a prayer request for the month. And remember, brothers and sisters Christ, these prayer request videos, I've had enemies attack me, and I've had brethren kind of question, well, you're just throwing out prayer requests for yourself. I'm giving you my prayer requests and the video, but the whole point of this these uh, videos, Brothers of Christ, is so in the comment section, you can put your prayer requests in the comment section. I mean, it seems like everybody's doing great, right? We're in the last days. There's a lot of prayer that needs to be going on, Brothers and Sisters of Christ. And that's the whole point. So instead of pray, because I always pray for the brethren. I pray for you, Brothers and Sisters of Christ, in general. In general things. Okay? But the whole point of this video is so that we can have specific things and specific people to pray for. Okay? So, even though I'm giving my prayer requests here <coughs> for myself or for the brother, brethren in Christ in general, <coughs> sorry about that, you can be giving your uh, prayer requests specifically in the comment section, okay? Uh, the last, yesterday and today, the cloud has come in, cloud covered, and the sun will come out every once in a while, so why I'm still wearing my hat while I'm working out here, is the sun could come out without you knowing it, and next thing you know, you can get a sunburn. Uh, overheating with me I overheat um, but the weather here has been it started heating up started getting warm uh, 100 uh, I think on the deck it got close to uh, 109 on the deck here uh, not yesterday but a couple days ago uh, but the deck teams the thing I like about this deck the little side thing is that it heats things up so even during the winter if it's a sunny day it'll heat the deck up so the deck is still like 5 to 10 degrees warmer than it is if you were to go for a walk in the shade. Um, so that's the deck there. So the area, it might have been like 90 everywhere else. But um, it's like another cloud covered day, which is a good day. That means I can get out and do a lot more work. But as I said, I'm getting ready for winter. So I'm getting the garden. It's starting to wind down, trying to harvest what little bit's left. And um, I like to fill in the garden completely full uh, to the top. I always top it off with manure. and let it compost down over the winter when it's raining because it rains non-stop sometimes during the winter here and that's what I'm doing there I got the chicken coop that I'm dealing with right now I'm still trying to find that I need prayer brothers says Christ for the uh, bobcat desperately need prayer for the bobcat still dealing with the bobcat okay I'm going for walks talking with the Lord I've got a huge Bible study that's going to be coming out to probably tomorrow um, for our next series of studies I've been trying to do spend the week praying putting the Bible study together for the week and go back to praying instead of being so quick to put out a Bible study almost every other day. Praying and letting God show me. And God showed me so much and a three-page study turned into a nine-page study, so it might be a two-parter. Um, but praying about it and taking time to get Bible studies out instead of being in too much of a hurry. But I know we desperately need good Bible studies in these last days. So pray for me when it comes to the ministry. But I always like to read these verses. I know the enemy, they like to attack. He just says the same verses all the time. Well, these are key verses for what I'm talking about here when it comes to prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Brothers and Christ, this monthly prayer request is also a reminder to make sure you have a healthy prayer life. A healthy prayer life where you're praying every day. Especially today, are you praying to God in tears? Are you praying to God for the condition of the body of Christ in tears? Because the condition of the body of Christ in these last days is not that great. I was reading the Old Testament when they first rebuilt the temple. The first temple, they did the foundation. And um, what was it? They had half the people were mourning and crying because they could see that that temple was a shadow of its former self. Okay? And that they were crying because of the sin and wickedness that the first temple got destroyed and look this is subs this is the second temple but it's not as great as the first but it's there so you have half of them mourning about the condition of the second temple and you've got half of them uh, re re uh, rejoicing that there is a second temple better than having no temple but the thing is is are you cr are you praying hardcore for the body of Christ today brothers this Christ every day some people are praying with tears. Some people are going to be praying with joy. When you see something great happen in the body of Christ, people getting back up on their feet that have become part of the falling away. People doing right by the scriptures. But you're also going to have tears because you're going to see brethren fall away. 
you're going to see brethren doing things the world's way instead of the Bible's way. How they're treating one another. Their walk with the Lord almost becomes non-existent for some of them. They just go back into the world. So some of us are praying with tears and some of us are praying with joy. Okay? But are you praying for the body of Christ? What about the condition of this world? Okay. This wicked world, uh, let the car go by. Uh, this wicked world, are you praying with tears? Uh, I took a trip down to, I'm pointing the right direction, but it's down to south to Crescent City. And I looked at the lighthouse, went to some of the beaches that I walk around, I gospel tracked. Uh, I stopped at this old mom and pa place to eat and I sat down and I just, I felt uncomfortable. Just really did. Out of place, uncomfortable. And I'm sitting there and my whole trip, what I noticed is that there was a table. Brother says Christ, there was a table. And it looked like it had seven men sitting there eating, elderly men, like a bunch of men coming together, sitting, talking, you know, socializing and everything. And they're just talking and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm sitting there waiting for my food. The food comes and everything. And then that table gets up and leaves before I do. And as they get up to leave and walk away, three of them were women. And I'm just sitting there going, I, w I was shocked. I was like, short hair, men's apparel, you couldn't distinguish them from the, the men when they're just sitting there. The elderly women, the elderly, you couldn't distinguish it between the two. I looked around and the way the men were dressed, the way the, uh, the, uh, the children are dressed. Right? I don't think I saw, I think every toddler, I'll say toddler, like five or six year old girl that was with their parents, they're all dressed like boys. Almost every last one of them, I think there was one that had a, a little had a little skirt on, like a dress, and everything. And it was like, but most of them, all the others, they're dressed like boys. Even cutting their hair really short. And I'm like, you know, and the wickedness of this world. Then I went to the, there's a used bookstore down there that, it's not really a bookstore, it's an antique store that they take used books in. And I like walking through there because the old antiques, you walk through there, it reminds me of going into my grandparents' house in Oklahoma. And you'd walk into the house and you get that smell of the old wood, the old paintings, the old paper, the old books. They had a lot of books that were old. And you just got that smell of antique and, and old. And I walk in there and I start looking at some of the books. And uh, I was able to find a, a King James Bible that I'll be showing in another video here shortly. Um, but as I was walking through there though, looking at a lot of the books and the wickedness of this world and everything. and. Brothers of Christ, are you praying for this wicked world that God will open the eyes of those who want their eyes open? You know, that I always pray that get, God gives them every opportunity to get saved. But then it comes back and redounds back to the body of Christ. Are we praying for the body of Christ that God, that we have courage to witness for Jesus Christ? To get out there and get that last person saved. As, they, as some people used to preach, we've got to get that last person saved so we can go home. Catch the way the body of Christ could happen any day. But now a lot of people, a lot of brethren are turning from that. Oh, Jesus isn't coming back for seven years, so the gospel's not that important. Oh, this Bible's not that important. Jesus ain't coming back for another seven years. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. You're supposed to have a prayer. I pray for the Lord about everything. I'm going to go do this in the garden, Lord. I'm going to go do this. Please bless it. Let it be your will, Lord. Let me be able to do it right. Help me with this, Lord. Help provide me. Thank you, Lord, for providing me with this food and raiment. I got raiment on, food. Okay. Make a request made known unto God. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and it prayeth not, and it shall be given him. Wisdom. Okay. When I read the scriptures, I pray. Before, after, and... When I'm by myself, even during it, I pray. I say, Lord, what is this supposed to be about? Oh, Lord, this reminds me of this over here. How is it linked? To... And you start talking to the Lord, and you ask the Lord, open the scriptures to me. Lord, help me see through this wicked world. Help me hide your word in my heart so I can see through this wicked world. We ask God for wisdom. I just got finished reading that verse uh, last night about the, God has made the wisdom of this world is nothing. Made foolish. The wisdom of this world. I don't want the wisdom of the world. Some of the brethren are falling back into the wisdom of the world and trying to do things the world's way. I don't want the wisdom of the world. Lord, I want your wisdom. I want to do things your way. 
And no matter what's going on out there, the world's falling apart, Brother Sis Christ. There's nothing we can do about what's going on in the world. All we can do is live our life for Jesus Christ here. Right here where I'm living, live for Jesus Christ. Be a light to the people around me. Witness when doors open. Lay out gospel tracts. Keep praying hardcore. That's all we can do. We can't change the world. But you got some men in ministry that get so distracted by the world, thinking like, we can do something about it. We can't. The world's going the direction it's going because God's allowing it to happen. Okay? But that comes down to the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world says man can fix things. Man can bring in a utopia. We can do it. The Bible says we can't. Only God can this world is not going to be right until Jesus Christ comes back and sets it right. Amen. We need to be praying for wisdom. John 17, 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Brother Jesus Christ, we're supposed to be praying for the brethren in these last days as things get tougher physically and spiritually. It's getting harder in these last days. Brethren are dropping like flies. I've said this before in the past, but it just seems like when you think it can't get any worse, it, it, it does. The brethren, More brethren are dropping like flies. Look at how the brethren are treating each other online. Look how the brethren are being pulled away from this. They take their eyes off Jesus Christ because they're lowercase g God, whoever it is, the, the Bible says respecter of persons. Whoever the respecter of persons is tells them that, hey, we can take our eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. It's okay. That catching way isn't going to happen for another five or six or seven years. And they do that. And then what happens when you take your eyes off Jesus Christ and His Word? You start doing things the world's way. Okay? You start getting into sin and wickedness. You start feeding your flesh. Instead of putting down the flesh, what the Bible teaches us how to do, you start feeding your flesh. You know, I know brethren that just... I told them, I said, you need to stay away from these certain people because they're promoting Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, anime, which is basically just child porn, anime, satanic-style music, video games. You need to stay away from them. You've come, to, like a brother or sister in Christ came to me and talked to me about their, their addictions, their faults, the Bible says, their faults, the things that they struggle with, even now that they're saved, before they were saved, they didn't struggle with it, they loved it. Now that they're saved, there's certain things that we struggle with, brothers says Christ, till the day we die. And it's a struggle for them. And I told them, you need to stay away from this group of people, because this group of people, if, even if they, they claim to be saved, even if they are saved, you need to stay away from them. They've fallen away, and if you keep sticking with them, you're going to become part of the falling away. And what happens? They become part of the falling away. I haven't heard from them in a while. Now they're like, well, not all video games are bad. Well, not all Hollywood movies are bad. Not all anime is bad. And not all satanic style music bad. I mean, uh, their whole demeanor changed. They didn't heed my warning. Stay away from them. But that's what's going on a lot lately. That's why I kind of went on a little bit of a rant, Brothers is Christ. I'm not going to go on a rant here, but I get frustrated with the internet. I'm pointing into my office there where the computer is. I get frustrated with the internet and people having internet Christians. Okay, they're only a Christian on the internet. But if you could see how they're living their life when they're not on the internet, putting on a show, oh boy. We need to pray for the brethren. That God gets that sin out of your life, gets that wickedness out of your life, gets the distractions out of your life, and gets you back on the right path. Get you back in the Word of God and get back to living it. I had a brother in another country tell me that he's got brethren that are falling away and getting into some bad things. And he's like, it, it bugs him. And it bugs me too. And it's, it puts a sorrow in our heart, a burden on our heart, trying to help him. But you can't help people who don't want help. But we should, we should try. Doesn't mean we shouldn't try. We should try. Today, the world doesn't want the gospel as a whole. They predominantly don't want Jesus Christ. Does that mean we stop preaching the gospel? No. We need to keep trying. You see brethren falling away? You try. They flat out won't listen? Okay. Let them alone. Pray for them. Pray for them. But brothers Jesus Christ, my biggest prayer is the flesh and sin and wickedness and being distracted by the world. Take it. Basically, the whole point of this ministry right now is keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. In these dark days, in these tough times, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. 
Okay? Why? Because brethren are taking their eyes off Jesus Christ, which means they're taking this book does not hold the place that you once held. This was number one in their life, the most prized possession in their life. This was their foundation on matters of faith and practice. This is everything. God's Word. Now, it gathers dust on the shelf for some of the brethren. It just gathers dust. Oh, I don't even open it when I listen to Bible studies. I'll just let them do all the work and I'll just listen to them. It's like, brother, you need to get this book open. You need to start reading it every day. Start your day with it. End your day with it. Prayer, 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 which is what this is all about. But I pray that the brethren keep them from evil. And one of my prayer requests is I know my limits, brother. So I know my faults. I know what I can handle and what I can't handle. Okay. I can't. I'll give you an example. Video games. Hollywood movies. TV shows. I can't go hang out with some of my family members. Why? Because I remember one time I'm like, I'm done with this. God got everything out of my life. And this was years and years ago. I went to visit one of my brothers. And as soon as I got in the house, I was like, hey, let's go to the park. There's some places we can go around here. Look at some, you know, there's got to be a museum or something. Something. But all he wanted to do was watch Hollywood movies and play video games. And the next thing I know, I found myself on my tablet playing a little game. I know what I can handle and what I can't handle. I can't handle being around him. Because it's going to get me to go back to doing things I'm not supposed to do. We all have things that we struggle with, brother and sister Christ, and I'm praying for the brethren. Falling back into the flesh, I, I, I'm going to tell you this. I told the brother in Christ, I said, for me, when I first got saved, my struggles, at first I tried to hold on to that stuff. The Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, I didn't want to let them go. I fought the Lord on, in getting rid of it, and it took the Lord several years to get them out of my life. And when they came back into my life early on as a saved sinner, I realized I was hiding. I fell back into them as hiding. When bad things would happen to me physically, I'd go through some rough times, whether it's spiritually, physically, I'd return to my former self, like trying to resurrect the old man, trying to hide from what was going on. I wasn't turning to this. And God really had to teach me to turn to this. It was something you have to learn to do. Bad habits, you gotta get out of your life. You're always going to fall. If your default is to fall back into bad habits, you need to turn to this. You need to turn to prayer. And, so, and we're supposed to be able to turn to the brethren for help, for encouragement, okay, for correction. Okay. But these days, it's hard with the brethren. That's why I say we need to pray for the brethren, the condition of the body of Christ. Romans 1.9 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you in my prayers. Are you praying for the brethren all the time? When you go to say a prayer about, your, about something you need here, I need this, Lord, I need that, and help me with this, Lord, and oh, Lord, I'm being, and it's all me, I, 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 me, me, which is good. You need to be talking to the Lord, praying to the Lord about you. But do you realize that, sometimes, that you need to be always slipping in a prayer for the brethren? Oh, Lord, I've been talking about me for 30 minutes and my problems and what I need and, and thanking you for the things that you've done for me in my life and what you provide. But you know what? I need to throw this in there. Lord, watch over the brethren. If I'm having these hard times and I'm having this struggling with the flesh and I'm having these hard times dealing with the lost world, I'm having these hard times dealing with brethren that have fallen away, stabbing you in the back. If I'm having these hard times, how are the brethren doing? Sometimes we get so focused on this, we forget about everyone else. What about everybody else, whether it's this Christ? We need to be making sure to be mentioning the brethren in our prayers every day. Okay. And one thing Paul says, Romans 10, 1, Brethren, my heart's desire that, and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. I still pay for, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Like I said, I have a couple of uh, channels that I turn to that's live channels of the prayer wall, and then there's a little room beside the prayer wall. And there's a guy that I watch that he does uh, walks, where he doesn't talk or nothing. He walks all over Jerusalem, whether it's uh, Israel, all over Israel, whether it's Jerusalem, whether it's, uh, um, gosh, some of the other places, the sea. He goes up to the Mediterranean Sea, and walks along the coast. He walks along, you get to see the tomb of David, supposedly the tomb of David, but the Mount of Olives, you know, he goes through the city, the gates, all the different gates, and he just, he's walking around. 
and I get to see Jerusalem. And it helps me remind me of, you know, to pray for Jerusalem. That God will save as many as he can, and he will. He checks the heart. God will check the heart. But that the Jews, you know, that some as much as can get saved today, get saved today. And that remembering that that's an important place over there. It's an important place. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. Okay. So, for these prayers, brothers and sisters Christ, there's a lot of praying that needs to be going on, especially in these last days. There's a lot of praying that needs to be going on. Make sure you're praying, brothers and sisters Christ, not just for yourselves, but for everyone, all the brethren. Make sure you're praying for the lost out there, that God gives them every opportunity to get saved, but it also bounces back to us to saying that God gives us all the encouragement, the courage to witness, that God will open doors for us to witness in these last days, that God will help set that fire for witnessing for Jesus Christ again. Yes, it looks bad. It looks bleak. It seems like nobody wants the gospel. I hand gospel. No, I don't want gospel tracts. Oh, don't tell me about your Jesus. I showed you about the little piece of paper I got on my card. I don't want to be part of your, your book club. I'd rather go to hell than be part of your book club because I've got that magnet of the lion, which is representing the King James Bible and all the Bible perversions where it's just tearing up all the Bible perversions because they're just garbage, they're just trash. And But I also have a sign on there that says that if you were to die tonight, would you be in heaven or hell? I got a sign on there that says uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? I, got, I got magnet signs on my truck, and he didn't like it. Yes, brother in Christ, I know the doors are closing, the, the world as a whole is so wicked, they want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. But we're not to stop. And one of our prayers should always be, Lord, open doors so I can witness more to my neighbors. I've already witnessed a lot of them. Please open doors. Maybe something changed. Maybe they're hitting rock bottom. Maybe they're becoming broken. Open doors, brother Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to pray for. Open doors. As we're praying for the lost world, that God gives them every opportunity to get saved. And He will. But I always pray for it because when you pray for something like that, you're saying, Lord, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve every opportunity to get saved. We don't even deserve to get saved. The first time. I mean, the first opportunity to get saved. Let alone, 50, that God gave me so many opportunities and God saved me one day because I came to Him broken. He found me in the right condition and He saved me. We pray for every opportunity. Okay. Uh, my health. So for going back to me, for this is my prayer request. Brother says Christ in the video and then put your prayer requests down please please I can't believe that the body of Christ is just perfect I see how bad it is out there among the brethren the fighting the backbiting the whispering the mocking the railing for railing the gossip the bearing false witness the pride the bitterness the hate the hate towards God's Word the hate towards each other the hate towards this world the people in this world True love, someone once taught me true love for the lost world, true love for anybody, but true love for the lost world is preaching truth to them. True love for a brother and sister Christ, preaching truth to them. Encouraging them through this. Be in there for them. Okay? Willing to give your life. There's no greater love than this, that a friend lay down his life for his friend. Willing to give your life to preach the gospel to the lost world. Willing to give your life to preach the truth to the brethren. To keep them on the straight and narrow on the right path. True love. Uh -huh. Put. I just can't believe that everything's just perfect. Uh -huh. So it's up to you, brothers and sisters Christ. I can't change the world. Okay, God will change the world someday. And God will set things right. I can only encourage you to do what's right. Stick to this. Uh -huh. So my prayer request, my health. My health's been doing a little bit better, but with all the heat, like I said, I, do, I, get, I had a major heat stroke in the military, and from then on, I've always had a problem with heat, okay, overheating. Um, so we've been having close to 90 to 100 degree weather, so I was able to get work done for like two to three hours in the mornings, but once it hits noon and you've got that 90 to 100 degrees out here, I try to get out and do things for like five, 10 minutes, and then I'm back inside. So, um, but winter's coming along. Uh, my knees, I'm always praying for my knees. I don't, I don't want to get surgery on my knees. They'll probably tell me, we could put a pin in your knees and your knees would be great. I had a neighbor that had major surgery done on his knees 
and one is a little bit better. One is a little bit better than it was before, but the other one was worse. <laughs> so it's like, so there's a 50-50 chance, you know? So I need prayer. I'd rather God just get me through it. And I, He has. He's ha I'm up, I'm walking. That's one of the biggest prayers. I'm still walking. It's just my knees give out if I try to bend over and lift things that's more than like 20 pounds. I can't crouch down and lift something that's like 20 to 30 pounds. Uh, my, my muscles are all tore up from my seizure disorder that came from the heat stroke. Um, so I go to try to lift something. I look like I'm lifting something that's like 50 or 60 pounds. Ugh, when it's probably only like 30. <laughs> and everyone else, someone, some other man, like a lot of the elderly people around here when I'm helping them out, they walk up next to me and they pick it up like it's nothing and they're like 20 years older than I am. You know, 15, 20 years older than I am. And I'm going, I'm, I'm doing my best, brother and sister Christ, but my health, the Lord has blessed me. I can still sleep okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hey, there's a little sprinkling going on. Um, I hope it doesn't start raining yet because I want to finish the video, but my health, Lord, brother, brother and sister Christ, I pray to the Lord all the time for my health. And I, that's a prayer request for my health. Victoria's doing great. Praise the Lord. Ever since we got the teeth taken out, all the bad teeth, she's been doing a lot better. I got to keep her haircut and everything. She still can't walk down the steps. Like I said, I look at her and I tell the Lord, I said, someday you're going to take her. And I know that. Someday the Lord's going to take her. She's getting old. She's 14 now. Um, 13 to 14 years old. And she can't make it up and down the stairs on her own. Her, her feet, she can walk. Just barely, she can just walk. I took her to the beach yesterday. I told you I took that trip. I took her to the beach yesterday where it was just sand and she was going crazy like a little like a young pup again just enjoying the sand and running all over the sand. But if there's rocks or anything that's just unstable, it's not flat sand, um, she just goes really slow. Um, and uh, so uh, thank you for keeping her in my prayers because she's been a blessing. Um, she's not a necessity. She's a, she's a blessing. I know she's, it's not one of the needs, but the Lord has really blessed me with her. Right. So I thank you. It's my miniature schnauzer, Victoria, my miniature schnauzer. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Um, and then my prayers keep God keeping me on the straight and narrow, especially with everything that's been going on. Like I said, the flesh is always gnawing. I mean, I get so frustrated because I'm sitting there and then I hear some kind of comment. I'll oh, go ahead. Look how bad things are getting. You deserve to have a little fun. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun. I remember hearing a, a brother in Christ say that, trying to justify sin. There's nothing wrong with us having a little fun. There's nothing wrong with you having a little fun. And my flesh is always trying to talk me back into doing things I'm not supposed to do. And I've always got to pray. And a brother in Christ suggests um, lamentations. Okay? But, um... I'm going to add to that. If you're, going to, if you're getting tempted by the world and worldliness and sin, read Lamentations, absolutely. But before you read Lamentations, go back to um, 1 Kings. I think it's 1 Kings where it starts getting into Solomon. And you go back and you look at the condition that Israel was in when Solomon, before Solomon fell. How great the temple was. Look at all the animal sacrifices. Look what they were doing for the look at the prosperity of Israel. Then read Lamentations. Okay, God today, God will not destroy like utterly destroy. He might kill you and bring you home early, but and you can consider that utterly destroying a brother or sister in Christ. But today there's chastisement, and God will break you and break you to get you back on the right path if you're truly saved and born again. And you look at your walk with the Lord and how great it is and then you look at the condition it is now you like right now my walk with the Lord I seems great it seems great but we're supposed to have that shield of faith we're supposed to have the whole armor of God on we're supposed to be on our def we're supposed to keep an eye out to make sure that we don't get complacent everything seems great now my walk with the Lord and everything but I know that if I start getting back into those bad things you know my my temp my faults are Temptations with Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games. If I start falling back on those things, it's going to wreck, utterly wreck my walk with the Lord. It's like comparing right now um, Solomon and his day, my walk with the Lord's like then. Hey! But if I start falling into the world and, dis and the distractions of the world and the, the fleshness of the world and covetousness, which is idolatry, it can become like lamentations. My walk with the Lord. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. But I still need prayer for it, brother says Christ. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I never try to put myself on a pedestal up here. I'm a man of God and I'm preaching and teaching and, and I'm up here and everything and I don't have problems like you guys have. I'm perfect and you guys aren't. That's not me. I struggle just like you do, brother says Christ. I, your struggles might not be the exact same struggles that I have. Everyone has their addictions that they had to get rid of when they got saved. God got them out of your life. Everyone has their struggles with sin. Everyone does. Brothers, right? We need to be praying for one another. We need to be holding each other accountable. And we need to be praying for one another. Okay? It's the straight and narrow. Man. And then one of the big prayers for today, Brothers of Christ, is not getting distracted. Is the world, seem like the world's falling downhill faster and faster and faster as time goes on? Yes. But does that distract us from living for Jesus Christ every day? No. Does that change how we're supposed to live our life for Jesus Christ every day? No. We're to continue reading this book, hiding it in our heart, and living it. We're going to continue praying all the time. We're to continue being there for the brother, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And men in ministry, we continue preaching the Word of God, encourage brethren to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. If you're following a ministry that stopped get, pro, exhorting you and promoting you to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ every day, you can come back any day now, Keep your eyes on Him and make sure you're living for Him every day. If they've kind of gone away from that and it's all about look at what's going on in the world, and you might want to find another a ministry. Or just get back to, this is my first solution, get back to pray, uh, studying the Bible and reading the Bible for yourself and praying. We just said one of the prayers was to ask God for wisdom and that He'd open this book to you. If you have a ministry that's fallen away and it's getting all worldly, you're going to have to let it go and find one that hasn't. And you say, that's kind of hard today. God will lead, lead, lead you to some that haven't. He will. Right? My ministry is not the only Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry out there. There are other brethren out there preaching and teaching. It's just when we seem to find one or two, we stick with those one and two. And then we feel like we're stuck with those one and two. Uh, no. If they start falling away, and the same thing goes for me. If I start falling away and I start preaching things that aren't in the Bible... Please come talk to me. I want to get on the right track. I want to do what's right by the Lord. Okay? But I'm not the only Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry out there. God has not sh shut the doors yet. It could happen. I could get kicked off the Internet. Okay? Uh, we can lose access to the Internet. the Internet. They're always talking about redoing a whole new Internet. And we could lose access to the new Internet that comes out. I just got an email saying that if you... You want 400, I think it's 400 megabyte speed because they just redid all the wiring in this whole neighborhood and everything. If you want 400 megabyte speed, uh, you, we'll just charge you an extra $20. Okay, but I think a lot of it, I believe a lot of it's going to come in, all this stuff that's being done is to bring in a whole new internet. They're going to revamp and do a whole new internet. And if you don't have the mark, like I said, I think it's for the time of Jacob's Trouble. If you don't have the mark and worship the beast, you won't have access to the internet. How are you supposed to pay for it? But that's a whole other thing. But the, the, the brothers of Christ, Satan is trying to use everything in the world to distract us. He really is. Don't get distracted. Don't forget who it is that saved you. Like with the life that you're living, not your words. The life that you're living. Don't let. Don't forget who it is that saved you. Why you got saved, and who it is you serve. You don't serve this wicked flesh. You don't serve this wicked world. You don't serve brethren that have fallen away other than to pray for them and try to help them back on their feet. But if they refuse to get back on their feet, you don't serve them. They weren't crucified for you. Remember what Paul said? Where, um, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Apollos, uh, Paul, I'm of Apollos. Were, were you crucified for Paul? Were you baptized in my name? Talking about, no, you serve Jesus Christ. Make sure you're staying focused, and that's who you serve, Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, the real Jesus Christ. The hard thing about today, another prayer for today, is all the false religions, all the, um, the false Jesus. It's going to be in our study a little bit, but uh, where Paul warns about people going around preaching another Jesus. I've said this before, most of the world believes in a false Jesus. Uh, even though a lot of my neighbors that are professing Christians, it seems like they're, they, they say some things that, that line up with the, the King James Bible, and they don't even use the King James Bible, but 
because that's how you get them. You approach some, you always preach some truth and you mix in a lot of error and you mix in a lot of lies. It's like 90% lies, 10% truth. You have to have a little bit of truth in there. But there's a false Jesus being preached today. There's false gospels being preached today. Okay, people are receiving another spirit, an antichrist spirit. Most of the world is looking forward to the time of Jacob's trouble, even if they don't know it. They're looking forward to the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because they've got an antichrist spirit. And they're looking with their lives and their actions and everything. They're looking for the man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be the ultimate antichrist. When Jesus said there'll be many antichrists, he's talking about him too. It's just he's going to be the ultimate antichrist. He's not called an antichrist. He's called the man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay. That's what they're looking for. But we need to not get distracted by them. The false religions out there, they're the hardest people to reach. Brethren that have fallen away, they're the hardest people to reach. Okay. Especially, and they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. That's what gets me. The brethren that fall away, if someone came to me and showed me in the scriptures, that thing you're doing there, that's wrong. Oh, okay, I need to get it out. I get it out. As long as it lines up with the scriptures and I'm wrong, I'll get it out. But today, brethren that fall away, they're hard to deal with. We need prayer. We need help from the Lord on how to deal with them. You know, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. No, no, we're supposed to do it in pride and envy and, and bitterness. And we're seeking to destroy them. No, 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 no. We're supposed to do it in meekness, and our goal is to build them back up and get them back on their feet. That's supposed to be the goal of a brother and sister in Christ. That's how you love, truly love a brother and sister in Christ. That's how you can truly tell if someone loves the brethren. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Building them back up. So with the intent to get them back on the right path, to build them back up. Or is their intent just to kick them to the curb like they're nothing and destroy them? Oh boy. We need to pray that we don't get distracted. We need to pray for the brethren. Okay. And patience. The Lord is working on me with patience. But more than anything, being content. One of my prayer requests for the brethren to pray for me is helping me be content with the state that God has me in. Mainly ministry-wise. Okay, being content. This is what God has for me. I'm here. I'm always ready if, if, if brethren start showing up and all of a sudden we want to put together a house church, praise the Lord. If I get called somewhere else, have to sell the house and get called somewhere else to do a, to be part of a house church, praise the Lord. But always sitting here, sometimes I sit here and I whine and complain. And the Lord puts up with it to a point and every once in a while he'll smack me upside the head and say, Hey, stop whining and complaining. Be content with what I have for you. I get to preach the word, praise the Lord. I have his, body, his word in my hand to read and study for myself. Right? He's given a roof over my head. I've got food and raiment. Uh, you need to be content. Right? I am pretty much content with the food and raiment part. It's just God needs to help me be content with what he has for me in ministry. This is what it is right now. I believe that I got into ministry in the last days. And I'm so blessed that God is using me in this late hour. Right? I'm so blessed. Right? So I really need prayer for this ministry, Brother Says Christ, that God helps me stay focused to this and not get distracted by what's going on in the world and not be distracted by the backbiting and whispering. I don't want to be drawn into the backbiting and whispering and railing for railing, the pride, the bitterness, the hate, and the ego and all that garbage that's going on. I don't want to be brought into the drama. I want to just stick to this. Okay? If you believe I'm wrong, Stick to this. If you resort to attacking me personally, you know, beat it. This is how we exhort the brethren. This is how we correct the brethren. Some brethren have forgotten that. This is our foundation. No, no, no. We can attack people. I don't want to be like that. So we're get, that's why we got back in this series. We're getting into really trying to encourage the brethren to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ and to live for him every day, looking, present tense, for that blessed hope. Um, but to be content, help me with that, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you. Help me, help me, help me with that, brothers and Christ. So right now, those are my prayer requests. I mean, the garden's got to be shut down. <laughs> um, if I had a, um, I don't have one, but if I had a, um, uh, try to think of the word. Sometimes words disappear. Uh, but you had a shed that you can grow stuff in. All right, I'll say it like that. Maybe the Lord will help me. Lord, please help me. 
remember. Um, but there's, if I had a building, a little shed that you would grow things in, I could still grow things during the, the winter. I could, because the sun does come out during the winter and it would heat a, a garden shed, you know. Um, but I don't. So for the most part, I get everything set up and get it ready to go so when spring hits around, all I have to do is plant. I don't have to worry about digging things. and I try to get that all done now before winter hits. So, like I said, God keeps me busy. That's a good thing. That's a good prayer request. That God keeps me busy physically. Because one of the biggest things that hurt me is idle, being idle. When I'm idle, that's when most of the temptations come in. The doubt. You know, the, the fear. Whatever. That's when it mostly comes in when I'm idle. But if I can stay busy physically and spiritually, I can sit out here and listen to God's Word. I can sit out here and pray and read the Bible. I have the Bible in my hand as I'm reading it and praying for hours. I can do that. But if you're just sitting there not praying, not reading the Bible, not listening to the Word of God, and you're not doing physical work and you're just sitting there for hours, that's when that temptation starts gnawing at you. So I'm thankful and grateful that the Lord keeps me busy. So that's a good prayer request too. That the Lord keeps me busy physically and spiritually. And I pray that for you, brother and sister Christ, in these last days. That God keeps you busy physically and spiritually. And that you provide, that you have uh, food and raiment. And I'll throw this in there real quick before we end this. Bibles. Brothers and sisters Christ, I just got some two new Bibles I want to share with you in the next video. Um, but brothers and sisters Christ, if you need Bibles, let me know. Okay, come talk to me. Uh, email the ministry, okay, and I will try to get you a Bible. Okay. Uh, food and raiment. If some of you in these hard times, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, I've, I've had people try to hit me up for money, and I'll, I'll ask them, what, what, can I hear your testimony? And they're clueless, what's a testimony? And I'm like, okay, someone's just trying to get money from me. Brothers and sisters Christ, I'll ask for your testimony, and I'll ask how your walk with the Lord is. I'll ask you what your beliefs are. Okay, um, and I still most likely I help people. Period. But most of the money, the spare money I have goes to helping brethren out already that are hurting, and giving Bibles to people. Okay, whether you're overseas trying to get you a Bible, uh, I've tried. I've helped brethren overseas get Bibles. Uh, I've helped brethren in the states. United. That's where I am. In the United States. I've helped brethren in the states get Bibles. Good Bibles. They've got some cheap Bibles, but they can't afford the nice Bibles. Okay, and I've helped them get some good Bibles that last a lifetime, if you take care of it. If you take care of it. So, um, just want to throw that in there as part of the prayer video, uh, that let the brethren know that I am still helping brethren out get Bibles and stuff like that. I still like doing that. So if you need a good Bible, let me know. Um, so grace and peace. Make sure you're praying, brother says Christ. Make sure you're praying. And my prayer is that there's grace and peace among the body of Christ that can only come from Jesus Christ through His Word. If you're hiding it in your heart and you're living it. And here I'm going to quote another scripture again that I quote all the time. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You want real peace and you want real joy? Make sure you're on the right path. And you're living the right path. God will give you real peace and real joy. You have grace and peace. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and please if God puts it on your heart please put a prayer request down in the comment section. And I will pray for you and I know the brethren as a whole will pray for you. Okay? It's good to have specific prayer requests instead of just praying in general. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.